Hi, and welcome to this lesson on multiplying and dividing numbers using significant figures. So this is part three of our series on significant figures, and here we're going to take a look at how the rules for significant figures apply when you're multiplying and dividing numbers. So similarly to what we showed in our video where we added and subtracted numbers using significant figures, which you can click on our channel and watch if you haven't yet seen, here we're going to talk about what to do when we're multiplying and dividing. And the first step is just to take the exact numbers that you have there right in front of you and go ahead and multiply or divide getting your exact answers. So in this case, if you type into a calculator, do it in your head or write on a piece of paper, 26 times 3, the result will come out to be 78. If you do 42 divided by 14, your result will come out to be 3. And if you do 1.3 times 2, your result should come out to be 2.6. But we're not yet done. On a test, we don't want to turn in a final answer as any of those three numbers because we want to first check and make sure that we have correctly calculated the number of significant figures. So when you're multiplying and dividing, the correct number of significant figures to use in your final answer is the least or fewest number of significant figures of any individual number in the problem that you're working with. So let's take a look. For 26, how many significant figures does that number have? If you said 2, you're correct. 26 has 2 significant figures, and 3 has only 1 significant figure. If you're not sure of how to calculate the correct number of significant figures, please take a look at our first video in the series about how to calculate the correct number of significant figures before we get into the math operations. But now, if we have 2 sig figs and 1 sig fig, then that means the fewest is 1. So our final answer should have one significant figure. And that means we need to round this number 78 to a number that has one significant figure. So if we do so, the correct answer will be, if you said 80, you're correct. 80 has only one significant figure because if we remember from lesson one, we only count when we have zeros to the right we only count the non-zero digits. So here, that 8 would be significant, but we would not include that 0. So 80 would have only one significant figure, and that would be the final way we want to express our answer for 26 times 3 with the correct number of significant figures. Let's go ahead and go through our last two examples and make sure that we're comfortable with that process. So for 42, how many sig figs do we have there? If you said 2, you're correct. And for 14, we see two non-zero digits there, so that also has two significant figures. So since each of these numbers has two significant figures, our final answer should have two significant figures. Now in this case, when we divide 42 divided by 14, if you were to type that into your calculator, your calculator would just give you three as a result. But in order for this number to have two significant figures, we need to add a zero after our decimal. Because remember, the zeros to the right of your decimal do count when you're dealing with significant figures. Let's take a look at our last example. 1.3 times 2 gives us 2.6. How many sig figs in 1.3? If you said 2, you're correct. How many sig figs in the number 2? If you said 1, you're correct. So the fewest number of sig figs here is 1 sig fig for the number two, just one whole number there. So that means our final answer has to have only one significant figure. So 2.6 needs to be rounded. And in this case, we need to round that to the closest whole number, which is three. So we would have only one sig fig in that final answer. If you have further questions, please feel free to watch our additional videos, or you can visit our website at www.sandersontestprep.com. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.